The Cannondale System 6 versus the Super 6. Which one's faster, uphill, downhill, on the flats, into the winds? How much do they weigh? What was my riding experience like? And which one would I prefer to take home and why? I've got a unique review coming up on these two machines, so let's get into it. So in this review today, we're gonna to be doing things a little bit differently. I'm actually gonna be commentating. And as you can see, I'm getting the first bike out of my car there, being the current Cannondale Super 6 High Mod with its more aero brother or sister, the System 6, waiting to come out next for five separate head-to-head -head speed tests, where I believe one test is really gonna blow your hair back. And in between each test, I'm gonna be reviewing the bikes. So the agenda for these speed tests and for this review will be split into 10 micro sections, which you can see here. I'll also have timestamps for you below. Now, as we watch me in an uncoordinated manner switch the wheels from one bike to another so I can demonstrate to you that not only are the group sets exactly the same on these bikes for the speed test, but I also use the exact same Caden wheels. I wanted to point out a few things before we get into these 10 items. Number one, I wanted to thank Ben Kirsten and the ACA team, including head mechanic Dave Manton for providing both bikes for what was almost four weeks in the end. By having prolonged access to these bikes, I'm able to provide comprehensive reviews like this, so thanks a million. If you want to follow ACA and their Continental Race team, they use these bikes, obviously. I'll provide a link below. I also wanted to provide clarity regarding these tests because obviously they're not going to be perfect, but I wanted to explain that for each test, I was positioned in the hoods. I attempted to take the same lines. Both bikes have quark power meters, which was my primary source of truth. Both quark power meters are fully calibrated prior to the test, but they are different power meters, so there could be some discrepancies here. I did not drink out of my water bottle for these tests to ensure extra weight in the bottle did not favor any test. Finally, the wind was a factor this day, not so much up the hill, which is quite protected, more so on the flat segments. For speed test three, I had a cross tail, and for speed test four, a cross head, while the wind was a factor. To me, there was no noticeable change in wind during any segment, it was just present. Lastly, I just wanted to say, if you get value out of this video today, please don't forget to give it a like, and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell if you wanna get more independent bike reviews like this in the future. So section number one, which is speed test one. If you haven't heard this claim before, on the Cannondale website, they say the System 6 is faster than lightweight climbing bikes on any climb up to 6% gradient or more, depending on riders' power to weight. So let's put this claim to the test on the famous hill climb on closed roads here in Noosa, Australia called Gindia Drive. Yes, it's not 6% exactly, but it's a nice gradient and a safe environment for me to test the way. And I would say this was the only segment out of all of them where I struggled to keep it at the target wattage of 300 watts, averaging 310 watts on the Super 6 and 309 watts on the System 6. However, with only one watt difference, I think we have a fair test. And as you can see, the Super 6 wins this battle by one second. Will an extra 40 watts make a big difference on this climb? We'll have to wait and see because section number two is the weight of both bikes. Here you can see my new weighing machine, which was purchased from BCF, boating, camping, and fishing. Thanks for the tip, Dave. So this is actually a fish weighing tool that works quite well for around 40 to 50 bucks. And we have the Super 6 weighing in at 7.295 and the System 6 weighing in at 7.625, with a total weight saving going to the Super 6 of 330 grams. Now, don't forget that both bikes have a couple of water cages, and the Super 6 did have a longer stem, and the seat was 27 grams heavier, so you might like to round that up to roughly a 375 gram difference, or maybe you can round it up to 400, but it's not as much as I expected. Both bikes of 54 centimeters come with SRAM Force Access ETAP 12 speed with a 5037 on the front and a 1028 on the rear with some lovely cadent 49 millimeter carbon wheels which are claimed to weigh 1,367 grams and certainly ride stiff due to their 
two to one spoke pattern ratio at the front and the rear. And we'll have more details coming on these wheels in later videos. We've also got quark power meters and obviously my beloved disc brakes. If you want more info on this setup, Dave Manton, the head mechanic from ACA did an overview video, which I'll link to below. Section number three is speed test two. Now we're heading up the same climb, Gindia Drive, only at a different wattage with 350 watts being the target. So that's an extra 40 or so watts over the previous attempt. And now the system six is roughly one kilometer per hour faster, which equates to at the top of the hill, six seconds faster all up, which over a three and a half minute climb is significant. Section number four is price points. Now the setup you can see on these bikes is bespoke based on the sponsors and the relationships the ACA team have in place. However, if we land on the Cannondale websites here in Australia, we can see the top of the range Cannondale Super 6 Evo lands at $14,500 AUD, which is very pricey. However, if we compare that to the latest S-Works Tarmac, we're talking $3,500 difference. Yes, components are different and the S-Works comes with a power meter, but $14,500 isn't looking too bad after this. And if we look at the BMC equivalent, the SLR011 with similar specs, it's coming in at $500 more. So once again, the Super 6 isn't looking so bad. But of course, if we look at other pro peloton bikes such as Merida or Canyon, we know the Cannondale is going to all of a sudden look high again. But overall, it's not the most expensive. Regarding the System 6, it appears that in Australia, we're going a tier 1 frame but a lower spec component tree, which comes in at about $10,000 AUD, which is similar to the old Venge Pro, less expensive than say the Trek equivalent. And of course, a fair bit more than the Merida equivalent, which I recently reviewed and gave that a 9.5 for value for money. So overall, these bikes are expensive, yes, but value for money in comparison to other bikes, I'll have a score coming for you shortly. Section number five is speed test three. So now we're on a section of road I would call a false flat. And here, I'm targeting 350 watts, which I managed to get close to. And along this section of road, we have a cross tailwind which at times feels blustery and at other times it feels like i'm getting a nice little push in fact on this section of road i managed to ride 2.5 kilometers per hour or 1.5 miles per hour faster and as you can see here we conclude with a significant time difference of 13 seconds in this section going in favor of the system six Section number six is my experiences on both bikes. So before we get into the actual riding experiences on the bikes, geometry wise, a couple of shout outs. The system six at a 54 centimeter has a stack of 540 millimeters, which is 14 millimeters lower than the super six. Very common for the aero bike to be more aggressive at the front end and the lower position, a lower stack enables on the bike is no doubt a contributing factor to the speed test. Another major geometry consideration is the wheelbase. On the System 6, it's 975 millimeters, which is one of the shortest I've seen. For example, the Merida Reacto has a wheelbase of 990 millimeters and the Madone, 981 millimeters for the same bike size of 54 centimeters. And compare that to the Super 6, although I do wonder if they've got their numbers muddled up here as it doesn't seem to align to a logical flow from size to size. However, let's call it circa 1,000 millimeters or 100 centimeters. That's a huge difference right there. There's 25 millimeters in the wheelbase alone. And I feel that is a great segue into riding experiences because a longer wheelbase allows natural flex and compliance through the frame resulting in a more comfortable ride. A shorter wheelbase creates a stiffer, more responsive frame and significantly reduces flex and compliance. And that is certainly the case with both these bikes. One is very comfortable. In fact, I'd say the Super 6 rivals the BMC Team Machine from a comfort perspective. It absorbs the road well like the BMC Team Machine and the flex in the rear due to the drop seat stays and overall design makes you feel like you've got a flat tire at times, even though you don't. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of this side effect, but I do like comfort at the same time. At speed, you definitely notice the aero profiles on the Super 6 with its ability to hold speed in a draft similar to that of its brother. Yet despite the speed test, 
The Super 6 feels a lot more enjoyable to ride on the climbs, not only due to the comfort factor and less weight, but also because it feels so much more nimble out of the saddle, stretching the legs and pushing the bike side to side, whereas the System 6 feels like it wants to be planted in a straight line the vast majority of times. And to be honest, after going from the BMC Team Machine to the Super 6, I felt like the Super 6 had a great blend of comfort, speed and handling all wrapped up into one package but then I stepped on the beast of the System 6 and realized that speed had a whole new dimension. If you watched any of my previous videos on these bikes, you will know that I don't rate the comfort factor on the System 6. I can appreciate aero bikes aren't supposed to be that comfortable, but the System 6 is down the list of aero bikes when it comes to comfort. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but after a couple of hours on this machine, particularly at lower speeds where you tend to feel the road buzz, bumps and divots more, you're definitely going to feel it in your neck and shoulders and possibly your lower back, especially for those unconditioned riders. But where you miss out on comfort and even a bit of handling, and when I say handling, I mean look at the way this bike has been designed with the short wheelbase, the super aero profile tube shapes, probably the largest I've ever seen on an aero bike, I feel like this bike just wants to go in a straight line. Not saying cornering is bad, you just need to lean into the corner a little bit more. And the handling out of the saddle requires decent power output for the bike to respond well side to side. Otherwise, I feel like it's always leaning back to go in a straight line it so desperately wants to go in. But when it comes to straight line riding, going fast in a bunch ride or a criterium, to me, this would be one of the best choices out there. Out of all the aero bikes I've ridden, being the Venge, BMC Time Machine, Merida Reacto, Chapter 2 Rare, the previous generation Madone, the Cervelo S5, this one feels like the fastest, with exception of maybe the Cervelo S5. I would say speed would be a very close call between those two bikes. Lastly, on a couple of practical elements, I know there was a fair amount of chat about the Cannondale BB, bottom bracket, in the first video I published about these bikes. Personally, I did not experience any creaks or issues, and I did question Dave Manton, the head mechanic at ACA, about this, and he's not seen any issues so far either. So as Mark N puts it, maybe it's an urban legend, although reading online, it does seem reasonably prevalent but no issues from my side. If there's anyone out there that has some experiences, love to hear your comments and thoughts below. But something I did note is a potential design flaw on the System 6. This bike does have a tight turning circle and given the desire to be super aero, the clearance between the frame and fork are so close, add some rain and a bit of grit and grime that gets into the fork and you will see some abrasions, which doesn't work so well from a cosmetic perspective, but I'm sure this could be mitigated through meticulous cleaning after dirty rides. Section number seven is speed test four. So this test here is the one I expected to achieve the best results in favor of the system six, maybe external to the downhill descent. We have a slight decline, straight line going into a cross head, but we only end up being one kilometer per hour faster on this section of road. Similar to test two up Gindia at 350 watts, leaving us with another win to the system six, being three seconds on this segment. Section number eight is my rating system on both bikes. Now, before I share the scores, just know that these scores out of 10 are based on the category at a pro peloton bike level. So for example, when I say comfort or speed for the system six, it's comparing comfort and speed to aero bikes, not all round or endurance bikes. It's category based and we're talking about pro peloton bikes. And just note that I don't use the number seven as I've been told, it's a cop out number to use. So let's get into it. One final note on the rating system is I do find it hard to rate these bikes on value for money. Yes, they are great bikes and they are valuable, but any bike that's over $14,000 AUD $5,000 for the frame. I do struggle to hand it the scores over eight here, even though I was close. Section number nine is speed test five. So this test here was a carry on from test three where I was pedaling at 350 watts along a 2.15 kilometer false flat section. I picked a marker and at the exact same point on both bikes, stopped pedaling and kept in the same position down this descent. 
while I was expecting to have quite a significant difference on this segment, the System 6 was only one second faster. Now, if you want access to this Google Doc, you can see here, I'll provide a link below, along with the links to the Strava rides I did, which is where I drew this data from. So section number 10, which bike would I prefer to take home and why? Well, this shifted. When I first rode the Super 6, I was impressed. I'm a big fan of comfort and I like to go fast, and this bike was ticking both boxes well. I then got onto the System 6 for a couple of endurance rides and I thought to myself, I don't think I enjoy riding this bike so much. However, after taking this bike to some local fast bunch rides and taking it to my favorite local hill climb, Gindia Drive and PBing, I am left thinking about this bike perhaps more than any other bike I have ridden. And despite the fact the score out of 60 wasn't as strong as others, it's possibly the one bike I've been missing more so than others I've had in recent times. Go figure. Once again, if you got value out of this video today, please don't forget to give the video a like and I'll catch you in the next video.